Right, uh, welcome back after that short break. I hope everyone is here. I'm seeing 46 participants. So I hope uh, we are not missing anyone, right? Okay. So, um, right. So, uh, so far, what we have uh, done is to introduce you to the, uh, the learning management system, which is Open edX. And next, what I'm going to do is like uh, when you are, I mean, while you are doing um, all the activities, like say, for example, we have uh, the presentations and uh, we have group activities and assignments, exams. So like uh, when you are interacting with this academy, you may have certain uh, issues that you, I mean, you may encounter issues and you want to get it clarified uh, from the facilitators or maybe even um, uh, with, with the colleagues uh, that who have enrolled in this course. So for all these interactions, other than the Zoom chat that we are using now, we are using a platform called Slack. So let me share my screen. And um, yeah, what you are seeing here on my screen is uh, uh, we refer to this platform. Uh, the name of the platform is Slack. This is basically a workspace environment. What it means is like, uh, this is a platform in which people can interact. So these interactions can be just uh, just like what you do in um, say in uh, WhatsApp uh, or like Zoom, uh, not, not on Zoom, uh, Skype, like you can chat with the people one-to-one -one. and also like uh, you can chat with a group of people. So let me uh, explain to you the, uh, the, the interface that you are seeing here. And also let me remind, so right now, the version of Slack I'm using here is a desktop version. Meaning like if you Google on Slack desktop, then you will find a link to download application, which is a Slack application. Uh, and you can use it as a desktop application, which I'm doing right now because uh, I, I use Slack a lot. But most of you uh, in your emails, you must have received a link and when you click on that link, the Slack opens in the web browser itself. Like it, it opens in uh, Google Chrome or Firefox. So whatever the web browser you are using. So that's the commonest way of using it. But in case if you like this platform or if you are anyway using it uh, often in your uh, no, normal day-to-day -day activities, it is quite handy to have a, a desktop application of the Slack. So uh, in this, you can see like uh, uh, on my left-hand side here, I'm seeing the name of my workspace, which is DHS2 Analytics Tools Academy. And why I'm seeing it here is, as you can see here, now this is the one that is currently select, selected, which is this academy, right? So for this academy, this is my workspace. And if you are using Slack for, uh, say, you at your, at your organization or for any other work, you can add multiple versions of Slack, as you can see here. So I, I have added uh, uh, different other workspaces uh, uh, for my work and other activities. So in this Slack, you are seeing uh, onto your left-hand side, you are seeing a menu here called channels and then uh, uh, another menu called direct messages. So in this direct messages, uh, you will see the list of participants who have joined this workspace. So this list include all the, um, uh, the participants of this academy and the facilitators. So for example, if I want to uh, uh, drop a message right, uh, to one of the uh, participants, just a private message so that only that participant will be receiving, I can just uh, type it here. So um, what I can do is, okay, now Saurabh is here. I will just uh, message uh, Saurabh. Hope Saurabh is here. <laughs> Hi Saurabh, right? So ideally when I do that, uh, Saurabh, Saurabh should be receiving this message and he should be um, replying me back. Unless, of course, uh, he's sleeping. Are you there, Saurabh? Yeah. I don't know whether he's there. So <laughs> if he's there, he should be. Uh, he should He should uh, reply me here, and I, I'll be able to see the message. Right? So I don't know. For some reason, Saurabh is not uh, responding. I can try someone else. Who should I try? Um, OK, I'm going to message Rajiv. Rajiv, if you're there, I'm going to type, hi, Rajiv. And um, if he replies, okay, I can see now he's typing. So he's probably he's replying. Yes, okay, now I see the message. So this is like, I mean, all of you are familiar with it. This is like WhatsApp where you can do this direct messaging one-to-one, -one, right? So this is quite straightforward. Only thing what I want to highlight in addition is that here you can, you know, like um, now these are quite uh, self-explanatory. You can, when you type something, you can make it uh, bold, italic, right? 
And also, in addition, um, you can uh, post emojis which are available, right? And uh, you can also put links and attach uh, attach files. So you can even like, if you want to share uh, a Word document to another participant, you can just drag and drop that Word document here and you can send it as a direct message. So it is it is quite easy and um, you can, uh, uh, you know, like um, easily communicate uh, with participants rather than using email. So that's why we have it here. And one more thing I want to mention. Uh, okay, I can even mention it. Uh, okay, I am receiving a couple of messages from all the participants. So thank you so much. Right, okay. So uh, now that we are done with direct messages, I, I can just collapse it, right? Just when I do like this, all the direct messages will collapse. And uh, next, let me introduce to you what uh, we mean by channels. So basically, you can think of channel as something uh, like the group chats that you have in WhatsApp, okay? So uh, for example, we have a couple of channels. Uh, we have one channel for announcements where we will be, you know, like if we have an announcement for all the participants, like say, for example, uh, that we are going to, you know, uh, uh, give an extension to assignment submission. I don't think we, we are going to do that. I'm just mentioning, right? So if, if you do some, uh, some, if you want to communicate uh, any important messages like that, we'll be uh, making that announcement in this announcement channel, right? So. Um, here uh, you will appear the message. You, you will see the message uh, like, I mean, like whatever the announcement that we, that, that we will do. And then we have uh, another one called introduce yourself. This I think most of you have already used. So uh, I mean, like I don't need to explain. So I, I think it's quite uh, straightforward on how to communicate in this. So you can see like uh, all of you have access to this uh, channel, introduce yourself. And if you have not introduced yourself uh, to the, to the uh, fellow participants, uh, so far, you can definitely type and uh, type in here and uh, give a brief introduction uh, of you. So, I mean, we see that uh, most of you have done it already. So, thank you so much. Right. And then um, this one is just for us. I'm not going to open that. That is where we do our secret chats, right? The facilitators. And then, of course, uh, uh, this one is for the assignments. So, we have a number of assignments that we will be giving. Uh, in, in, while you are doing any of these assignments, if you have uh, specific queries about the assignments, please uh, type in this uh, channel so that we can directly attend to it. Because uh, like we don't want to, you know, like uh, why we have created a separate channel for this is like um, so that only the assignment related questions will be asked here. So in case if your uh, queries are not related to the assignments, um, you can just ask it in this channel called questions, right? So there you go. Right. Uh, I can already see that uh, some of you have, um, you know, like asked questions and our facilitators or even you all, like say, say for example, there may be some questions that uh, even you as a participant will be able to answer. So, I mean, I just want to inform you that uh, this, uh, uh, this, this workspace is not uh, for you to ask questions and the facilitators to answer. It's just that in case if you feel like you know something which you can share with the other, uh, uh, other pa participants, please feel free to uh, share it in this channel. Right, so basically that's it about the Slack. Uh, is there any questions on uh, Slack or uh, is anyone having any issues uh, um, while you say, I mean, when, when you're trying to join Slack, you can ask now or else you can type in the Zoom chat. But generally from here onwards, all, uh, any, if you have any questions, please use Slack uh, to communicate with uh, uh, participants because uh, the Zoom chat will disappear once we uh, close the session. <laughs> Sumit, are you having any, uh, any queries? All right. Uh, so, are there any questions about uh, Slack? And also, uh, I saw there were a couple of messages asking about how to mark attendance. We will let you know how to do it shortly. Uh, uh, you have to do it in Open edX. Uh, how to do it, we will let you know. So if we don't have any queries, I think uh, I will just stop it there. And uh, yeah. So. Next, what we will do is we will introduce you to the demo DHS2 instances that we'll be using 
uh, during the academy. Uh, so for example, we mentioned that there, there will be some assignments and you will have to practice certain things that uh, uh, we try to introduce during the academy. So to do that, you have to access the uh, DHS2 instance that we are using for the academy. Uh, yes, yes, Grant. Hi, Pamela, sorry, I didn't, um, I didn't realize there was an attendance thing. Would you like me to show you quickly where it is? Yeah, please, please do. Sure, one moment. Let me just share my screen again. Cool, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So uh, when you logged into the course, uh, you'll see it's coming up as tomorrow for some reason, but I'll uh, get it boosted today. So if you give it a moment in the introduction, logistics and an analytics and features section, uh, you'll shortly be able to see um, an attendance uh, box there. So if you just give it uh, a few minutes and I'll have that open for you. That's all. I'll pop a notification in the, uh, um, in the Zoom. I think uh, till grant get itself uh, fixed. Uh, we can show you the uh, DHS two instances that you'll be using for the exercises. Uh, so, Saurav. Yeah. Oh, thanks for more. Uh, so I'll quickly share my screen. What I have I done in the meanwhile is uh, on the assignments channel, I have uh, posted the link for the DHS two exercise instance, which you guys will be using for. Uh, um, doing your exercises and uh, uh, submitting your uh, assignments. So if you can see my screen, I'm currently on the assignments channel and I have uh, posted a link for the uh, exercise instance, uh, which you would be using for all your uh, assignment questions, uh, both ungraded and graded exercises and uh, uh, and for the comprehensive exercise as well. So if you would click on this link, uh, it will open up a link for you. Just one sec. Yeah. So this will open DHS2 instance for you. For this uh, academy, we're using uh, DHS2 version 2.35. Uh, you'll see an option to create an account both on the right uh, top corner and also here. You need to click on that specific button and a form will open for you. Uh, please add your first and last name, your username and password which you desire to use uh, for this specific uh, uh, instance and the corresponding details. What it would do is it will create an account for you uh, in the system and you will be logging in using the same uh, account for the next uh, set of uh, nine days that we have for the course and using the instance for all your exercises. Okay. Um, so this is what you can do uh, right now. And uh, once you create a users, we will uh, put the appropriate sharing settings within DHS2 so that you have access to all the data which is available in the system. So it's essential that you create your uh, user accounts today so that we could, uh, after the academy, after the course session today, we will uh, enable the sharing settings on all the user accounts that you create today so that you're able to use this instance from uh, today. Let me just try to log in to the admin access. So, um, so this instance has uh, basically program data for multiple programs and it is based on the WHO standard packages which have been defined by the team at Oslo in collaboration with the WHO headquarters in Geneva. So these programmatic packages basically uh, come uh, as a collection of data collection formats and indicators and dashboards which are based on the WHO clinical guidelines and 
countries are free to adapt this particular uh, these packages for uh, these key uh, health programs and they kind of are able to implement by kind of adapting to the standards which the WHO has defined as ideal set of data collection points and indicators which uh, the key programs such as HIV, immunization, uh, malaria should capture uh, in, in a country. Okay? So we have uh, an arbitrary um, uh, geographic region created for you, which we call as training land. And it has uh, two regions available and some districts and some clinics of different types. And then you have certain data sets which are available, which already have data. And all your exercises would be uh, would your questions and your uh, uh, case studies will be based on the data which is already available in the system for different programs. So you have the data already added in. You will be asked to create uh, validation rules or test validation rules, create pivot tables, create maps uh, and charts in the visualizer through the data which is already available in the system. So in terms of uh, there is no uh, data required externally to kind of go through the exercises. Everything is already added in and uh, well set for you to uh, access that specific sets of data and perform your exercises on that. Uh, so Pamod will be doing a kind of an overview of the uh, analytical apps available in the system. Uh, in a short while, but then most of us are already DHS to users. So you will have access to these different applications available in the system. And the, largely what we'll be focusing on uh, the analytical applications. So dashboard is one of them, which would be a key focus. Then we'll be using the data visualizer app, which has now integrated the pivot table component into the visualizer app. So both for pivot tables and charts, we'll be using the data visualizer app. And then we have a dedicated maps app, which we'll be using for uh, generating our uh, uh, spatial analysis. You have the reports app, which we'll be using for uh, uh, understanding the functionalities available in the standard reports and, uh, and, and the uh, reporting with some of these and all that. Uh, then we have, um, a data quality app, which kind of helps you with the validation rules and stuff. So we'll have a look at that. And some bits of maintenance app where we'll have a look at how we configure the validation rules. So mostly the configuration aspect would be limited to the use of validation rules for uh, uh, data quality management, uh, validation rules through threshold, validation rules through calculated thresholds, and in the measuring internal consistency. Uh, rest all would be based on the analytical apps available in the system. We'll also have sessions where we cover the interpretations app, which is kind of uh, a dedicated application for you to discuss uh, the data, the analytical objects which you've created and kind of build a conversation on the data and exchange thoughts uh, on the data or the item which you have created for uh, discussions. Okay. So um, what I would like you to request is to create a user accounts today so that when you come tomorrow, we have your user accounts ready with the sharing settings enabled for all the data sets which are available in the system. So that when you do your exercises, you're able to get access to the data which is already there in the system. So that's about it for the, um, uh, the exercise instance, which you'll be using. Um, uh, yeah, so any questions, please post it on the Slack channel. I've added the link there and uh, please do create user accounts today. Yeah, that's it, thank you. Uh, Grant, if you were able to give access to the uh, attendance unit on edX, maybe we can show that. Uh, 
Yeah, sure, that's uh, open now if you give me a moment. Okay, over to you. Yeah, brilliant. So once you've logged into uh, into the DHIS2 Academy and you've gone into uh, the session, uh, you should see under the Introduction, Logistics and Analytics Features uh, tab, uh, there's an attendance button that you can click. And in here, you just need to enter a word of the day. And the word of the day is test, all lowercase, and then just select Submit. Okay, thanks, Rand. Uh, so yeah, so we, let's take a couple of minutes. Uh, we can quickly mark our attendances for the day by adding the word of the day, which was test, all in small letters. And um, please do create your uh, DHIS2 account in the meanwhile, uh, before we move on to the next uh, set of sessions.
So a gentle reminder, everyone, uh, how this word of the day works is uh, like uh, why we do this is to like uh, uh, identify the participants who have actually attended the session. So what we will do every day is uh, during one of the sessions, say like uh, it could be midday or it could be just at the start of the session or maybe after two, uh, like three hours, like towards the end of the session. In one of the, uh, uh, I mean, like most probably we'll put it in a slide. Uh, the word of the day, which will, which will be a text, and uh, we let you all know, right? So what you have to do is like uh, uh, at that time, like when you know, like say for example, today the word of the day is test, right? So that that particular text that we mentioned as word of the day, you have to log into the edX and type it there, right? So uh, <laughs> I see like some of you are asking like uh, in the Slack, what is the word of the day? For the, for the, because it's the first day and everybody is new to this, uh, we will mention it on the Slack. But uh, here onwards, how it will happen is like we will not mention the word of the day in Slack, but it will be mentioned. Uh, at, uh, I mean, uh, somewhere during the sessions, uh, in in one of the slides. So uh, you can join the live session and uh, uh, get to know what's the word of the day. Or else, in case if you miss out on that one, you can watch the offline uh, recorded version. And uh, know the word of the day from there, and uh, just in, uh, input that one in Open Index. So that's how your uh, attendance is getting marked. Uh, so I hope I'm clear about it. So uh, that's how we will be communicating word of the day on daily basis to all of you. Over.